right, good morning, everybody. It is February 9th, February 9th. So here we are. I'm going to look at uh, jumping in CVS here as part of my continuation play, my opening range, if you will. So that's about to be a trade. And then QCOM could be a trade because I traded on the switch and then, you know, speed bumping it after. And uh, But this massive tower candle, uh, I'm not going to trade it. Might stay inside that for a while. So not going to trade it. Um, just let that one go. And yep, yeah, and we'll look around and see if anything else uh, sets up for a trade. But right now, it's uh, CVS on deck. So let's um, look and see what CVS 73.31, roughly to 73.45, only 15 cents. 15, 20 cents. So I'm going to go over to the calculator, put that in. Okay, so I reduced my share size um, just because it's quite a bit of tower candle. Um, although now it's shrinking down, so we'll kind of see how this goes and then we'll uh, adjust as necessary. But I want to put my stop actually at the bottom of this candle um, and then go long on it. All right, so we're in. And I may add to my position position if this retraces because we do have a bit of a tower candle here. So 7303. That's my stop. 7303. So I got it set up to speed bump. So if this comes down and breaks that, we'll be in short. So about 52 cents. So we're going to go a little bigger on this one because we had a bunch of losers in this the last couple days. Although I almost made a mistake. So you can see we're on a massive tower candle where we traced about half of it. The this block is right in the middle of this tower candle and we're retracing about half of that which is expected half for all this tower candle get retraced before continuing higher so there is a switch that's taking place here but it's during a retracement of a tower candle so we're actually not going to take this trade no trade i want high probability setups this is not one it might still be a winner it's just not a high probability setup so i'm going to avoid it or if i really feel like i have to trade it i can do this 50 shares. We'll do that. And then if I have to speed bump it, I'll speed bump it and get a little heavy. So not a lot of money in CVS because I had to put my stop way down here. So, um, you know, I couldn't go with as much size. But whatever. Money, money. Money's money. It might pay for this loser over here I'm about to take. So we're gonna we're gonna short this and switch back. And three, two, one, and we're getting short. All right, so we just got short over here at TWOU. Should be getting stopped out here in a second of uh, CVS for profit. Wish I would have went a lot bigger. But the risk would have been huge to be way down here in a stop. So when I trade, I try to put my stop in the right place, and I control my risk by the position sizing. So if I don't want to risk more than 100 bucks, I don't I don't trade that many shares. I don't put my stop where I get out at 100 bucks. I do it by shares and put my stop in the right place. So we got in here on 47.25. How do we get that fill? It's weird, right? Because I got in on this candle, didn't even close yet, and didn't even didn't show that it was even down there. Because of the spread, maybe I'm the only one who shorted it. I don't know what happened here, but that's where we got in. All right, so we're out of uh, we're out of CVS. It looks like yeah, with 50 bucks, good deal. So yeah, I wish I would have went much bigger on my position size. Took full hundred. Our goal is a hundred per trade, but I couldn't. I couldn't. I had to manage my risk. It's a risk manage or a risk management. It might be mismanagement. We'll see how this day goes. It's a risk management game, so needed to uh, manage that risk. All right, so you can see why I went really light on uh, TWOU here because of that tower candle. 
So, and then uh, we got our our switch back. So we still could, I mean, this could still become a green trade, but, you know, I figured this switch is just because of the tower candle, not because of an actual um, setup. So I may have been right. I just took the trade because I felt like a casino trade and I uh, went really small size on it. And then uh, CVS, good thing we didn't overstay our welcome. Okay, so at the, this candle closes here, we'll, we'll switch over to a full size position um, with our stop right here, 47.41. So same thing, about 50 cents. And we're going to go a little bit big. I think I'm going to go check my back test blocks. See the record of TWOU and see this if it's a premium trade. Let's see, TWOU. Okay, so we are in full size now. And yep, it's a premium trade, so that's good. So we're actually bigger than a little bigger than full size. So I'm going to go ahead and clear these drawings just to make this clean. Yes, clear. So once this candle closes, I'll mark it up. I'll put my mark where I got in first real quick. So we're in at 4815. Wow, we got filled way up here. Man, we lost out on 15 cents. All right. So the stop's going to make it break it, 47.60. We're at 250, so we're going to go to 500. 47.60, so we can speed bump it if it um, comes back down. So when I'm up, going up and down on this, uh, this entry window over here, this ladder, you can see on the screen there's this white line moving. So I can see exactly where I'm going to put my stop. So I don't have to actually look at the numbers. I can just come over here and scroll down, get to where I want to be, and then uh, put my stop in right there. So I trade TWOU a couple ways. I traded on the switchback, and then I trade it with the simple switch day trading strategy that I teach. So um, we started with the switchback knowing that it was probably going to be a stop out. And with the simple switch strategy, here we are. We got permission. We got our switch, our permission. So we're good to go. And we had some losers on it. So this is a high probability trade. Kind of wish I took more shares on it, but we are a little heavier than normal, which is great. Looking for $100 normally, um, so if I can do a little more than that, recover some of the losses that we had on this thing recently in this trade, that would be great. All right, so here we are with TWOU coming way back down here. So we're in with 250 shares at this level right here. So I'm going to go ahead and boost this up to. All right, so as I was saying, uh, with that pullback, I wanted to go ahead and add to my position because this is on the premium list. And uh, right now we are getting some really stiff resistance here. So if we can get a breakout, this could be pretty nice. But at the same time, I'm tempted to sell since I've hit my target um, on this. And because it's a super premium, at the end of the day, if this ended up hitting its target, I would have to go back to my $100 risk reward, which means I've made enough to, to pay for those losers. So when I have more losers, I've made enough to pay for them. So I'm tempted to do that. But I'm also tempted to stay because it has had so many losers that this is a high probability this is going to be a winner and hit this target. And if it breaks out to hit this target, it can really push through this target and this day can become a really nice day, potentially making back most of the losses um, that this thing has had. I'm not going to stay just because I want to make back losses. I'll, I'll make back my, my losses over time, but it's definitely incentive when you put all the pieces together of losers overdue for a winner, resistance, looking for a potential breakout, which could give it a nice boost, which could really make it a bigger winner. It's a lot of incentive to stay. Fear makes me want to go ahead and get out though and just take my 220 and leave. And I think this is a problem with a lot of traders, pro traders and new traders, is we'll get into a, a position that's a winning position and we'll get out because we're afraid we're going to be a loser 
and we just want to make the money, right? And we're like, oh, just take my money and get out. So we get out early, uh, even though we know that it's going to go higher because that's the, that's the trade setup. The probability is there. But we get out anyway, and we just take our profit. And then when it's a loser, we're like, oh, no, I don't want to lose. So we end up staying, and we don't get out when we should be getting out. And then that loser becomes a huge loser, and then that, that perpetual cycle blows up your account. So it's just it's a really hard thing when you're in the money. You want to you want to keep something that you have, um, but I I have to remind myself that I'm not trading for money. I'm not trading for money. So I'm looking at my P and L here, which I shouldn't even be looking at, but I'm looking at my P and L and I'm starting to think about money when I can't. That's not what I'm doing right now. What I'm doing is trading to win. And trading to win is following the rules, playing the probability game. It's a numbers game, you know, like sales. You knock on enough doors, you get a sale. Then, you know, then what's that ratio and does it make sense? All that stuff, right? It's a numbers game. So that's what I'm doing. And I need to play the game. And what is the game? The game is watch the chart. When the algorithm gives me a trade setup that's a, that has a statistical proven probability of success, I take that trade. And what do I do when I take the trade? I get in. I got my entry, I got my target, I got my stop, and that's it. I just go for those numbers. And then, you know, if I have a loss, I could speed bump it as long as these criteria are in play. If not, then I can't speed bump it. Like, I have to go through the, the, the rules. It's a really short list of rules. It's not like I have, like, 100 rules. It's, like, five rules to look at. So, it's really like, it's a really short list. So, and as long as I do that and I play the game well, then I'll win the game. And if I'm winning the game, money's a side effect. But as I sit here and I see this money, it's almost like overriding the purpose of what I'm doing here playing this game and making me want to just jump out and take the money. Especially when I see that, I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to lose my money. I want out. I want out right now. But I got to play the game. And if this ticker isn't performing well, like if this is my player on the field in a football sense or soccer or other sport, this is my player on the field, and this player isn't performing well anymore. I need to get rid of this player and put a different player in. So I monitor what's happening with my trade log so that I can monitor these tickers. And if they're not performing as expected anymore, then I replace them with a, a ticker that is performing. And that's what happens. They do. You know, they, they perform well for years sometimes, and then they might start to, to slowly slip and not perform as well, you know, and once they get down into the 70% range, then I don't want them anymore, like 70, 75%, they're done. As long as they, you know, they can stay to 75% or above, I might hold on to them, but 80% and above is really what I want. So, um, you know, I just have to keep monitoring them so that I can uh, properly manage the team, if you will, that I'm going to put in the game. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I just want to let you know what's in my head, I, you know, for new traders who are thinking that way. Look, traders have been trading for a long time. We do the same thing. It's just when you have the experience um, and you've been trading for a long time and, and you've seen, I think the biggest thing is when you've been rewarded for playing the game well and you can remind yourself that, um, you know, I just got to play the game and not worry about the money. Money will be a side effect. And it's happened to you like for years and years and years. It's a little easier to overcome that emotional struggle. But when you haven't been a successful trader, when you're not making a living trading or you don't have that proven um, track record behind you, it, it can be really hard to overcome that, um, that struggle like that. I'm, that pull I'm having right now, just jump out, you're in resistance, get out kind of thing. And, you know, maybe this turns into a loser and I wish I got out, but I, I just, you know, I, I keep looking at my track record and reminding myself like play the game. So, but when you don't have that track record, it's that much harder because when you haven't been successful, it's hard to, to, to be confident in what you're doing. You know, every time you do it, if you, if you have failure, whether you broke the rules or not, you have failure. It's that failure, that, that feeling of failure that weighs on you. But when you've had success, when you've won the game, when you've won the races, all that stuff, you can draw from that to get strength to, to overcome these urges. And it definitely makes it a bit easier. Um, so what do you do as a new trader then? How do you overcome that urge to sell right now? So the way that happens is in the sim. You know, you do it for a long time in the sim and you get confidence there. You have your back testing and you see what your results were in your back testing and you keep that where you have visual access of it. So when you have these emotional pulls, you pull up your back tests. You pull up your 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 log from your sim. You pull up these things 
and you look at them and you're like, I just got to follow the rules. You know, you, you can see what, what happens when you follow the rules. Um, and then if you have a log like I have and you are able to do your risk management with your scaling ladders and all that stuff and project out what your potential year looks like, and then you built your trading plan based on your year, then that even makes it even that much more easy because then you're like, look, if I just play the game, I follow the rules, uh, this is my projection. I'm probably not going to hit these numbers. I might get half of that, but half of that is still really awesome. So I just need to, I just need to do what I'm supposed to do. So And those kind of things can help kind of like snap you out of it um, unless you have a friend sitting next to you saying, snap out of it. What are you doing? Just follow the rules. You have to do it yourself. So, and the biggest trap I think a lot of new traders have is this right now that I'm feeling that, you know, I want to get out and just take my 200. Normally I'm looking for a hundred win, win loss. And right now I'm double that. And I've had losses on this. This can recover my losses. Like I should just get out. Like this is the trap. And then when you do take losses, it's, oh, I need to stay. So, and then you end up with bigger losses. So the only way you're going to overcome that is having a statistical, a proven statistical probability of success, having a good trade plan, having, you know, having good risk management and having experience. And that experience could be in the sim. It doesn't have to be with live money. You just have to see confidence in that it's working. And then the last piece that helps me overcome it is to remind myself that I'm playing the game. I'm not here to make money. I'm here to play the game and I'm here to win the game. I'm here to make sure I have the best players in the field. And when they're not, I need to, to remove those players so I can win the game. And when I do win the game, money will be a side effect. So and I just have to remind myself that and not worry about the other end of it. But you ask, well, what about losing money? You're not worried about losing money? I mean, yeah. What if you lose the game? Then losing money is a side effect. It is. But when you have a good plan and you have your trade plan, you have, you know, you've tested everything. You have your statistical proven probability of success. You have a high probability of winning. Doesn't mean you will. You know, past performance does not in any way um, guarantee future performance, but it gives you a pretty good probability. So as long as I have that, then I know that, you know, the chances are I will win. And I set up my trading plan so that I can have a bad week, a bad day, a bad month. And I can survive that and, and grow it right back and, and get back ahead. So, I mean, look at this. This week's already started or this year for me in this log. The, the year actually started out great. It's when I decided I was going to reset the year with this log so that you could follow along that everything has gone downhill. And it's been a rough start. But, you know, I plan on that. You know, I set myself up to, to, um, to plan for that. So when I do have these bad trades, yeah, it's a downer. I want to make, I want to win and I want to make money, but, um, you know, I've planned for it. So it doesn't hurt that bad. It's almost like expected. It's like when you go to the casino and you put a hundred bucks in the, in, in the thing and you expect to spend all of that before you leave and leave with nothing. And you're kind of okay with it. That's, that's the position I put myself into when I come into the market. Like, Hey, I'm going to put a hundred bucks on the line. And if I don't make that, I'm fine with it. Like if I lose that, it's fine. You know, if I lose up to, you know, whatever my, my starting this year was $2,000, roughly 2,500, something like that. So cool. So if I lose that, you know, 2,500 is what my starting deal was, you know, 27,500, but after 2,500, I can't trade. So if I, and I, I put that on there knowing that I'm totally fine with giving away $2,500. Like, so what, you know, with my account, it doesn't matter if I have to, I just, I'll refund that account and then get back on the horse. So I'm totally fine with it. Now, if I put every penny I own, you know, I sold my car and all this stuff so that I can trade. And then if I lose that money, then I'm going to be in trouble. Then it's a whole different mindset, right? You're in a whole different world then because now it matters. And now you're going to make decisions. And this is where I would probably take my money off the table because it matters so much. The consequence of failure would be so high that I wouldn't be able to stick with this trade. The consequence of failure would be so high that it would be hard for me to get out of a trade when I'm supposed to get out because I don't want that failure to be there because of the consequences so high. So if you find yourself in a position where you can't resist the urge um, and to casino trade, you you know you're, you're staying in the trades longer than you should, or you're jumping out when you should be staying in, and you just can't resist the urge, there's a breakdown somewhere. Either you don't have a statistical proven probability of success or you don't have a good solid trading plan, you don't have a, a risk management plan with your scaling ladders that you can kind of project out and see what your year is going to be to see if that year is acceptable to you, 
And if it's not, you have to adjust your plan, you know? So is that acceptable to you? And then the biggest breakdown, and this is where I think it happens more than those other areas, is you're trading with too much size. You have too much risk. The money you're trading with, you can't afford to lose. So, and if you're in that situation, you're in big trouble when you're trading. So emotionally, you're going to get wrecked and the market's going to chew you up and, and you're going to be, you're going to go broke because you're trading for money at that point. When you trade for money, you don't get money. You lose money. So um, if you find yourself having a difficult time with those, with the rules and following the plan and all that, you have a bad plan. One of those other things I listed, or you're just trading with too much. So right now, if I was trading for a dollar and I was looking up there on my P&L and I was looking for a dollar risk reward and I was like, oh, I'm up at two bucks. Am I going to sell out to take that two dollars? You know, even if I lost five bucks last week and my account saves, you know, twenty seven thousand five hundred dollar account and I'm looking at two dollars and I'm going to just it's going to be so easy to follow the rules. Right. I'm, I'm trading to follow the rules because I really don't care about that two bucks like that's nothing. So that 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 alone shows you that you know what i just have too much size if i'm if i'm if i can't resist this urge i have too much size whereas you know if it was a two dollar account what would you do ask yourself that if this was only two bucks on the line or a dollar on the line what would i what would i be doing a dollar compared to my account size right now now if you have a four dollar account you, you know <laughs> you're gonna be pretty stressed out but if you have a thirty thousand dollar account and you're risking a buck what would you do in that scenario would you follow the rules? Hopefully you're saying yes. Other people would be like, no, if I'm only going to, if it's a dollar at risk, I'm just never going to sell. I'm going to wait until I'm green again and then get out because who cares? Like, no, that's not the point of the exercise. So anyway, I hope that helps you all out. Um, and then hopefully this thing will, yes, I'm using the word hope and trading, which is like a really bad word, but um, hopefully this thing does boost through here. So I added to my position. I'm definitely way heavy compared to normal, right? I'm way in the green here compared to what my risk reward on my plan is, which is $100 risk, $100 reward, unless we have premium trades like we do today. So if I found myself, you know what? I surprised myself and I bought more shares than I'm comfortable with. Right now, I feel uncomfortable with this position to a point that it's just it's overwhelming for me. If that was the case right now, I'm totally cool. I mean, I feel that the pull, I think we all do, even pros that have been trading for, you know, 50 years probably still feel that pull. Um, and I'm just telling you how I deal with that when I do feel that pull. But, um, and, you know, even on $10, I'll feel that pull because for me, it is really about winning more than money um, right now. Once this account grows and we're talking like this is looking at five grand, then it's going to be a little bit more about money. You know, the, the pull at wise will be a little bit on the money side. But for, I think, a lot of pro traders, the pull where they're tr starting out small at the beginning of the year, the pull is more about winning. And right now, if I take my trade off the table, it's a winning trade. And I can say, hey, I had a green day today. You know, not about, hey, I made 200 bucks or 50 bucks or a thousand, whatever. It's, hey, I made, you know, I had a green day today. You know, I took two trades and they're both winners. Like, it's that part of it, right? Like, when you talk to your friends later on, like, hey, how was your day? Hey, I, I was a winner on every one of my trades. How'd you guys do today? You know? So it's more about that right now. Like, man, if I take my trade off the table right now, I'll be a winner. And if I don't, I might have to be like, man, I had another red day today. So, you know, that's that's the other side of the pool. So what do you do if that's the that's the side? You're just like, you know, I've already hit my targets. I really don't want to have a red day today. I've had three red days. And psychologically, I need to feel good today at the end of the day. I need to have a reset if not tomorrow, I'm going to go into trading feeling really down because I've had four red days and psychologically, I know that's going to affect me and I might make some bad decisions because I'm going to be so desperate to have a green day, you know, especially if I'm having my YouTube channel or other channel on some other platform. And it's like, man, I don't want to show everybody another red day. Like, what am I going to do? Like, if that's the position that you're in, it's a different story, right? So now you want to follow the rules, but you just, you want to have that emotional reset. So what I would do if I was feeling that right now, which I'm not really feeling that right now, maybe a tiny little itty bitty bit because we've had a couple red days and I had a red day yesterday. So today I would like to be a green day for sure. So if I was feeling that to where, I, you know, it was overwhelming me, then I would just take off some of my position. I would look at my risk here. I would do, do the quick math. I would remove a bunch of these shares because so that I can still have at least a hundred dollar risk reward 
um, and that would remove the rest. And then what happens is if it does come down into the red, it's a really tiny red. Maybe I'm still green on the trade. You know, maybe I end up red on the trade, but it's such a small red that if I have another trade set up today, I'll be right back in the green. Um, you know, this already was a winner, so maybe that would account for it. Like, I would start to do that kind of math and see how many shares I could take off of here, still hit a $100 target, and at the same time, give the other shares a chance to run. Because really, this is all I need to make is 100 bucks today on this trade. I don't need to make every, any, every dollar over that 100 bucks is bonus money based on the premium trade. So um, that's, that's, the, that's what I would try to do to do with that pull. So, but what also happens, sorry if I'm talking too much. If you guys hate it when I do this, then let me know and I will uh, try not to do it. But the other thing that happens now too is as a trader, you start looking at this and you start having confirmation bias, right? Like, what is it you're feeling? Am I feeling I want to get out? Okay, if I'm feeling I want to get out, then I'm like, I'm doing this. I'm like, uh, I know I'm trading off an algorithm and I don't need all this other stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, there's a trend line right here. We had this, 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 this. It broke that. It came back up to test it. It's going to roll over and fail. And then, you know, if that if that's not doing it for me, then I'm going to be like, you know, right here, there's like an, it looks like we're going to try to form an, uh, an M pattern and then it's going to break down and it's going to crash and it's going to gap down. I'm going to lose all my money. I should just get out. And then, you know, you're going to start looking at all these things Then you may like zoom out. So you see what's happening right now is I'm trying to confirm the feeling that I'm having. So confirmation bias, right? So I'm doing everything I can to try to confirm that I'll go back. I'll, I might change my time frame to one hour. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. So confirmation bias, really, really bad in trading. So and I think a lot of traders, they lose because of that. And then if I don't, if I don't get enough information here, what am I going to do? I'm going to go to stock twits, Yahoo, all these different things. And I'm going to start to see what other traders are saying about TWU right now. And they're like, Oh man, everybody thinks this is going down. I should get out all that stuff, which I almost want to do an experiment with those social platforms. Like I want to look at them and then see what the consensus is. And if everybody thinks it's going down, I just want to go the opposite direction. You know, whatever they're saying, I want to go the opposite direction and see what that probability is. See what that success rate is. I'd probably be like a hundred percent success just to go the opposite of what everybody's talking about on social media. So unless you're doing the GME thing, um, this last week was insane or two weeks ago. So anyway, so confirmation bias is huge, right? And if I wanted it to go long, I'd be doing the same thing. I'd be like, no, look, we're making a high, and then we got a low, a higher high, higher low, higher high. We're going to have a higher low, and it's going to keep on going up. And then I start looking at all those things, right? So confirmation bias is a huge thing. And when you're looking at charts, the other challenges, this is subjective. There's clearly somebody else looking at the same chart saying, no, this is going down. I'm shorting it. And there's clearly other people saying that it's going up also and they're buying it. So why are we all doing different things? Because it's subjective. You know, when you're looking at it, it's a subjective viewpoint. And then there's some emotional pull that goes in there too. Like what is someone's emotional pull on it? Did they read something on stock twits? So now they're shorting it. And because they're shorting it, other people are like, oh, it's going down a little bit. Maybe I should be looking at shorting it. And like, you know, so... There's all these other things that, that go into it, but I think the subjective viewpoints and confirmation bias are really dangerous for traders. So that's why I try to just have my, my plan and trade my plan. And look, this was nice green, right? I was up 200 bucks. I was double what my daily goal was. Let's see, what were my losses on this thing? TWOU. So yesterday we lost $200 on it. So when I was up that 200 bucks, if I would have just sold, I would have hit my daily goal on it. Right now, risk reward is 100 bucks daily goal. And I would have recovered all of yesterday's losses by doing that. And then last week, I had a loss on it for $260. And the week before that, 250 TWOU has been kicking my butt. This might this might be getting dumped here soon. We'll see what happens today, TWOU. You're not performing. You're going to get off the field. So, um, so yeah. So I've had you know quite a bit of losses on it. So today, I could have took took back a huge huge win could have made it all back already right here had i just got out but i'm not going to follow the rules and if it's a loser it's a loser and that's that's it if i don't like that then i need to replace this player with a new player at the same time if this is a winner and i played it based on a super premium play i would recover yesterday's loss and probably last week's loss and if this has a good breakout 
you know, anything can happen. I could recover all, all the losses, but that's not the goal. It's just a possibility. So trading to follow the rules is the goal. So anyway, so that's why we're still in it. If everybody's looking at it, be like, you're an idiot. Why are you not getting out? You hit your 100. You had 200. Don't be stupid. All that stuff. Now nah, you know why I'm doing what I'm doing. All right, buddy. Let's see what happens. Okay, so just got stopped out of TWOU, and then we're going to go ahead and reverse. Uh, not going to reverse it. You're buying power because I am in CVS over here. So we're going to go ahead and reduce this. Okay, so now we're back in on a speed bump play. Down 236. TWOU has been hurting me bad this year. It might have to, uh, this might be getting the boot. We'll see. Yes, I'm like, man, I wish I would have took my 200, right? I only needed to do 100 for the what I'm, you know, the risk reward I'm working on right now. So, 200, yes, I wish I would have taken it, but at the same time, you know, this whole thing, you know, now I'm looking at that, I'm like, oh, the next time I'm going to take a trade, I'm going to almost get to my target. I'm going to want to pull my money off early. But I can. It's a numbers game. And if I'm always pulling my money off early and I'm always taking full losses, then it's just a slow bleed out until you're done. So I can't, you know, it's, it, it is a numbers game and I do have to play that numbers game. And like I said, if I don't like the player on the field, then I need to replace it. So if the rules don't work, then I need to, re to rearrange them, you know, fine. But they do work. The strategy works. The algorithm works. All that works. It's just the, uh, the player on the field right now here is not working so good for me. And I can look at that on my log and see, and which I'll show you later. Um, I can look in the log and see that, you know what who's performing well and who's not performing well and then I, as i track that as the performance drops off i can start cutting and replacing um you know tickers so anyway here we are in a speed bump play we'll see if this uh will give us uh some recovery or not uh, wasn't able to get full size because i'm in uh, cvs over here so uh, we'll see uh, we'll see what happens here
Okay, so here we are with TWOU. So, um, you know, we did take a $30 loss on this, the very first trade of the day. Um, so there's that little loss already in there. Uh, but and we got in late on the speed bump, um, but we also have our shares with average a little bit lower here too. So once we get, th and then I wasn't able to buy the full size that I had bought before. So that also is playing a factor or, or we probably already recovered our, our loss from the majority of it. So anyway, so we're in speed bump. So speed bump is just to get back some, not necessarily to get back all, but we're gonna watch this sell off. I mean, something bad is happening here for this, you know, big big move up, consolidating, and then just complete destruction. So we're gonna go ahead and ride this uh, for a while and see where it takes us. Basically recovered all the loss that we took from the second trade. The first trade we lost forty-five dollars on it, so we're back. We're you know we're down to our first trade loss right now. So really nice recovery. And like I said, I'm going to let this sell off a little bit longer, and then I'm going to move my stop down, lock in, uh, break even, and we'll see what happens. Okay, down to thirty. So part of me is tempted just to take my trade off here, but we're going to go ahead and do that at least, and then. Um, Spread were about uh, you know ten cents roughly, so ninety three right now. So at ninety ninety three, so at eighty two is where we want to be on the ask, and then we'll be able to be in a good spot. I could flatten it right here and probably get profit. Let's do that. Uh, flatten. Well, let's let's wait. Let's give it a chance to run. So it's at ninety three right now. This candle's got two more minutes to close. You know we're breaking. We're low of day, just breaking low of day. So this uh, this looks bad for this stock. All right, there we go. So we get some slide going. So get below 78 would be awesome on the ask. But 83, get below 83 on the ask, and I put my my stop in. It's 87. Yep, just broke low of day. Clearly, this looks bad for this ticker. I could help out a little bit. All right, so we're going to break this. 84, I want to get 83. All right, so now my stop is in at 83. If it backs up, I'm out, I'm happy, all good. And if it wants to keep running from here, then we'll uh, we'll trail it in chunks and uh, see what we can get. All right, so we are green on CVS, but we do have like a one penny spread. So I just need to get a little push more and I'm going to flatten this thing and call it a day, a tiny, tiny green day that could have been a huge red day. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> Up a little more, please. Come on, CVS, a little more. You can do it. Looking at this, looks like you got room to do it. Okay, there we are. Uh, flatten. No, 16 cents. <laughs> I wanted that to be a green trade. Oh, well, I'll take my 16 cent loss, I guess. Uh, one of those days. All right, so let's uh, let me put this stuff in the log. I'll be right back. Then we'll show you the trades in the day. All right, so here we are with APPS. So we only trade this on the long side with the, with the, the normal strategy. So we had a switch, but no permission. And then we didn't get anything else. And we I don't trade these till you know after like 12 31 o'clock the latest. Um, so nothing happened with APPS. So then we look at NUG. So over here at NUG, I marked it up here because um, we had a, a switch and permission, but I haven't vetted this for trades after one o'clock. So I don't know what the st statistical probability of success is. So no trade, just marked it up to take a look at it. Um, but we I didn't have any trades activate during the day we had switches but no permission so no trades on nug and then qcom qcom has had so many winners lately it's been insane so i didn't take this trade as you can see over here none of these have taken trades so the reason why i didn't was because we have a tower candle here it's indicated by the algorithm we have a switch and the box is inside the candle especially deep inside like that which told me that this is probably going to retrace this this candle will probably retrace so sure enough, it retraces with this candle triggering another switch, which would be the switch I would normally trade QCOM on. 
but because the switch was a result, I believe, of this tower candle before moving higher, I didn't want to trade it. Well, it ended up it being its own tower candle, which also told me we we're going to have retracement, probably, before potentially moving lower. So sure enough, we ended up getting that retracement, which confirmed the first one and the second one and moved lower. So everything as expected, if you will, but I didn't, I haven't vetted that with this algorithm to have a proven statistical probability of success and have exact numbers and data and all that stuff to trade off of. So I don't trade it on this algorithm. I do have another algorithm, which maybe one day I'll bring to YouTube, which is uh, all about searching for tower candles and trading them. Um, but anyway, so I didn't take the trade. If I had, it would have been a nice winner. Could have been a hundred dollar winner, which would have been awesome for a scaling ladder, um, but didn't do it. Okay, so TWOU, man, what a roller coaster. So this one I trade on the switchback, and then I also trade on the normal strategy. So right here we have our switch, and then we have our switchback. So on the switchback, we had um, a nice, you know, we had the permission, we had the normal strategy in effect, the switchback in effect, a lot of stuff saying that this is a good winner. We had a couple losers on this recently, so... Um, I believe two in a row plus uh, plus a flat day and another loser. So this is way in the super premium area like this. This is a re record territory to have a loss on this one today. So sure enough, you know, I went big on it because super premium, you know, risk reward normally 100 bucks went big on it. And had it been a winner, it would have been a nice, you know, three or four hundred dollar winner would have been awesome. But um, and I've had those losses. So this thing's eating up the account a little bit. Most of my red days are because of this one right here. So or small green days because this one took a big chunk out of my profit. So anyway, um, it didn't work out. You know, it went up. We talked about the market closing. We talked about it during the trade, during the trade, but it didn't work out and sold off. The question I had, and then I speed bumped it, and then we we're able to recover and uh, be green on it anyway, which happens a lot of times when I speed bump my my trades. So for those of you who are new or haven't gone over to my um, my site and my school and taken my classes, all my classes are free, by the way. So if you haven't been over there, all my trading classes are free. Uh, my strategy classes are free. Building um, a trade plan is free. So everything's free over there except for the algorithm. If you want my algorithm, you just have to purchase it. But everything else is, doesn't cost anything to learn. So, But speed bumps, basically, in a nutshell, and I go into a lot more detail over at the site, is where there's an opportunity to reverse a trade. So as a trader, my question to you is, if you're in a trade and you say this is where I'm getting out, if I'm wrong, I'm getting out right here because this this is where you're you're wrong. Or do you just put your stop where you don't want to lose any more money, so that's where your stop goes? There are two traders out there. There are traders that put their stop where they believe they're wrong, and there are traders that just put their stop because they don't want to lose any more money. So I put my stop where I believe I'm wrong, and I control my how much money I'm losing by the share size that I buy. So. If you're wrong at that location, then why not just reverse your trade and be right on the other end and recover a chunk of your loss or all of your loss? Why not do that? So that's the question to you. Um, put your responses in the comments below. And if you can like, hit that like button on this, that would definitely help me out with YouTube's algorithm. And if you're new and you subscribe and hit the bell icon, you can be notified of um, live trades that I upload and also different educational pieces that I upload. So anyway, so that's what we did with uh, TWOU. We speed bumped it, reversed the trade, and recovered all that, turned into a green day on it. Thank goodness. Even though it's a tiny one, it's still green. So then over here on CVS, we had, I trade this a couple different ways. I traded on an opening range trade, which we had here, which was awesome. Um, I wanted to go big on this because this is also on the premium list right now. And I'd explain more about that over at the website, What, how, why why things are premium, why, why things are not. Um, so anyway, and the link's in the description below. So, but I couldn't I couldn't go big on it because my stop needed to be below this uh, tower candle. Or not, yeah, it is a tower candle. It needed to be down here. So I couldn't go big on it. Had I put my stop here, I would have been stopped out, right? It came right back through and, hit the, and would have stopped me out twice. So put the stop in the right place, um, and it was a winner as it's expected, but I couldn't risk this much. So I had to go with a smaller share size, take a small profit on it. And then another trade set up here, sort of. Um, this is, you know, right at one o'clock is like my cutoff on this. I've embedded it past one o'clock. Wasn't gonna take this trade, but I was like, ah, you know what, I'll take it. 
But then when you go down and follow the white line down, I barely have permission on this too. So it's not like it's um, a really exciting trade, if you will. It doesn't, it's not a high probability. So, you know, if permission looked like this down here, it would have been great. But I jumped in anyway. So I jumped in um, because low probability, but still possible. Small size, so I wasn't risking a ton. And then uh, sure enough, it was a loser. Speed bumped it right here. And then, you know, last five minute candle could have really made some money, but I don't like to be in that five minute candle. Um, and I do a video on that as well over on the site why I don't want to be in that. But anyway, so we're able on the speed bump to come back. I thought put me in green, but <laughs> we'll take our 16 cent loss is what it is. So let's go over and look at the log. Okay, so here's my trade log. So I put my trades in for the day right here. So um, all my trades are loaded in and then I put notes over here to let me know kind of what was going on. I speed bumped this one, speed bumped that one. You know, I traded this one, you know, after one o'clock pretty much, 12.55 really, 12.55. So I put all these little notes in so I can keep track of what's going on, you know, what my risk was on each trade, what it, what the actual ended up being on the trade, so I can keep track of all that. And then I get averages, my average um, risk per share and all that different stuff up here so I can kind of, you know, better um, assess my trading throughout the year and make adjustments as needed. And right now, you know, January, we only had one week of trading in there. It was a rough week. Um, so that was, we closed that month red. February, we were in the red already. So, um, but we're digging our way out of the hole a little bit Two two rough days, right? Like, you know, right in here, um, this day is not so bad It's today, right? We we got lucky, but it could have been a nice green day and $75 loss this day is what did us in. So, you know, I'm only red on this, uh, on the month by $129. So had I not done this $788 blow up day, uh, making a mistake, then I uh, would have been, we'd be looking pretty good right now. So come over to the dashboard so you can see on the calendar. That's what I like. I like to see green boxes, even if it's only $3, you know, because I had that other, that one green trade, one red trade. Um, would have been nice to um, to have this bigger, but whatever, I'll take my three bucks. We did have our loser there. And this calculates more. It calculates my day trades, my swing trades that are closing, and also my futures trades. So it's not just my day trade numbers here. So that's why in some days I have bigger red days, but here it ends up being a small green because of other other setups um, saving the day, if you will. But either way, our day trade account's hurting a little bit here um, total, and our futures account is still hurting a little bit. But we'll uh, we'll definitely dig this out. You know, it's only this only has like eight days of trading on it, and we had a couple rough days, so that's how that's how it is. All right, everybody, um, have an awesome day. If you're interested in getting yourself this log, um, you can do that in the link below and check it out. I'm gonna jump over to the website. I think it's like uh, 50 bucks. I think actually it's still on sale over there right now for 25, I believe. So there's that. And then if you're um, if you if you went onto to my Teachable site and you have subscribed on there just to get my weekly updates, which I only I don't I only send out emails once a week. I don't bombard your your inbox. And the email on the weekly basically just tells you what's going on with the the algo, gives you updates on any school stuff, updates on market stuff. But it's just once a week because I, I hate when people spam me like crazy. So I don't do that. But if you went over there and you did that and you clicked opted out, um, then you're, you're if you're not receiving a weekly update from me, the last two weeks you wouldn't have because I've been traveling and I wasn't able to do it. But in general, if you if you went on there and you've never received an email from me, it's probably because you opted out of your of receiving emails. So that's why I haven't sent it to you. So if you haven't received any and you have been wanting or expecting or wondering, shoot me an email, go over there and shoot me an email and let me know. And then I can always uh, check your status and then change it to opt in. But all right, everybody have an awesome night. We'll see you tomorrow. And hopefully we can uh, get this uh, week green and get this account growing.